our gospel text. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he had heard it, he said, to, he said Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Someone said to me, I want to say the other day, but it wasn't really the other day. It was probably a couple of years ago, honestly. But what they said was, and to put the best construction on it, which is hard in this case, what they were trying to say is that you should act your faith and walk your faith. But what they said was, there's no room in church for hypocrites. To which I politely disagreed. I said, there's always more room for hypocrites. We always have more room for hypocrites. Because if you're not a hypocrite and you're in church, you're a liar. So, six in one hand, half a dozen in the other, points to this. You're sinners. So, and so were the Pharisees. Pharisees were also sinners. And yet, when Christ says these words to them, it's almost as if he's saying that the Pharisees are well. But we all know that as the plot untwists, and as we see Christ moving towards the cross, we see more and more that the Pharisees and the Sadducees are even worse than the tax collectors. Now, don't get me right. Don't get me wrong. None of us love the IRS. None of us. But the problem wasn't that they were, tax, that they were collect, collecting taxes. It's that they were skimming off the top. That's the problem. That was the issue. They would take more than, than uh, what was required, pocket some, and hand the rest over to the authorities. Okay? That was the problem. And then, what's really interesting is that they're always separated from the sinners. There's the tax collectors, and then there's the sinners. But the tax collectors, they're even more of sinners than sinners. Because they're also regular sinners, but they also take your money, which is bad. And we all agree with that. But, when crime, here's something that's very interesting that's not pointed out in the text very much by, by uh, pastors. And when it hit me, it hit me like a bolt of lightning, as if the Holy Spirit were tapping me on the shoulder. And it's this Christ did not go to the tax collectors and the sinners. In my mind, that's always what it was Christ going to the tax collectors and the sinners. But that's not what the text says. It says, as Christ was reclining at table, let me find the, ex the exact words. As Jesus reclined at table in his house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. We sinners have a long and historic past of fleeing to Jesus. We have, it's, it's, a, it's as if we orbit him. Why? Because we're not righteous. Not on our own. Not as we stand. And so, we migrate to Jesus. We migrate to the one who we can lay our sins down or, or even upon and say, Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon me. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy upon me. And he does. But woe to they who, like Pharisees, stand far off and judge those who are sinners while having contempt in their heart. In fact, even before that happened, Christ came to Matthew and he was sitting at the booth collecting taxes. And Christ said two words. Follow me. 
and he did it. I wonder how many of us would do that. I mean, think about it. It wasn't just a small thing. He left house, he left stature, he left occupation, all in two words. By Jesus. Follow me. Think what can be done when the three names of God are placed upon us. Even more than just follow me. Be a part of me. Be with me. I will have mercy upon you. You will be mine and I will be yours. And what are those three names? I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And with those words, the follow me is, is, is implied. It's not just follow me. It's you share in my burdens and you share in my cares and you share in my love and nothing ever, ever, ever will snatch you out of the palm of my hand. Name something that can separate you from the love that is in God. Nope, you can't. That's how secure Christ holds on to us. Yes, we sinners. Yes, we tax collectors. And yes, even we Pharisees who would eventually go after Christ to put him to death. We do so in our sin every single day. The question is, are you repentant? I know the answer. Because I heard your confession. And as I heard your confession, I spoke the words of Jesus to you. Not my words, Christ's words. I forgive you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Isn't that interesting? You have those bookends. Baptismal name. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I forgive you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And one day, when we are laying in our coffins, the pastor will come over to the body, and will make the sign of the cross upon the forehead, upon the heart, and upon the entire coffin, and say this, may the God, the Father who created this body, God the Son who redeemed this body by His own precious blood, and God the Holy Spirit who sanctified these remains, keep these remains until the resurrection of all flesh. So it seems that our follow me is constantly marked by God's name. No matter where we go, we are His. Yes, we're hypocrites. There's no doubt about that. We put on facades so that others don't see our deep down hurtful sins. But here's the thing. You're who Christ came for. What are you doing now but not meeting Christ reclining at His table? The best news for sinners is Jesus Christ. And the sweetest thing that we can hear is follow me. When we make our confirmations, we hear these words from Jesus as well. Follow me even to death rather than to fall away from it. So St. Matthew gave what he had. But these pyramids... And these vestments, the reason that they are the color that they are is because Matthew did not meet a happy end. When we have feasts with this color, it means that the saint was martyred, killed for the faith. And so, it would seem from the beginning of Matthew's story, from the follow me, all the way to following Christ into death, those th that it was bookended as well by the name of God. And so when we walk the path of Matthew, we walk the path of Christians. When we walk the path of Christians, we walk the path of Matthew. And here's the reality. Christ speaks to us these words. Follow me. All of you. You who have sinned against me. I give you rest. I give you peace. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I, I come not to call the righteous, but the sinners.
Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen.